On this episode of the Ritual Misery podcast, Amos is, uh, well, he's by himself, so he's going to talk about his own kind of stuff this week. Yeah, screw you, Kent. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 189 for Thursday, the 11th of October, 2018. This is a show where two lifelong friends usually uh, join guests and celebrate all things geek, but not this week. This week is just me, so I hope you like it. That's my cheesy smile for the audio listeners out there. Um, Hey, so this is uh, going to be an interesting episode. I haven't done one of these with uh, no notice before uh, because basically Kent's on vacation this week. He and Steph are out doing things and stuff and having having, uh, fun with the... With the family, I think. I think they're up north. I'm not quite sure. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is going to be my first solo show unplanned because I don't have any notes at all. I was kind of hoping Kent would have some notes that I could just bounce off him because it's been that kind of week, guys and gals, I guess. Uh, I really don't know the demographics of our listenership, to be honest with you. Huh. Anyway, um, I do have a couple things I want to talk about. One, I most people that listen to our show, most regular listeners will know that for a while, I was doing some work with Tom Merritt on the Daily Tech News show, um, being basically their standby producer. And I guess that's, that's, I, that's really the case anyway. Kind of whenever Roger can't, can't uh, either has an appointment or has something else going on or just needs a day off, I'll jump in there and do the live production of the show and some of the back back end stuff. Taking that experience and rolling with it, I'm doing a show called IQMZ Tech with our friend of the show, friend of the show, uh, Owen J.J. Stone, Stone, a.k.a. Odocta. He says it so much better than I do. And we go down and we do a little half-hour show once a week, and it's called IQMZ Tech. Uh, I'm going to say that one more time, I think, before I'm done with this, this little segment. But it's not exactly like DTNS or any of those other shows that I've seen. We go down through some stories that usually he picks them out, and I read the details, then he goes through and gives his little sarcastic comments. We kind of bounce ideas off each other. It's a lot of fun. It's so far mostly really close to 30 minutes. And this week's episode was actually shorter than that. It's like 26 minutes or something like that. Really fun. I encourage everyone to go over there and check that out. IQMZ Tech. You should be able to find it in all your podcatchers and everything else. And at IQMZ.com if the site is working right now because Owen is currently tra- making some changes. I have got to say, writing the summaries this last week to where we actually had like, you know, just not not just a link and a title, but actually wrote a summary out. There was a lot more work than I thought it was, which doesn't surprise me, I guess. It was a lot of fun and it was only mildly stressful because as you're writing them, you got to make sure that you're getting everything right. And hopefully I got everything right and I didn't screw anything up. Some of the articles that I was writing a summary on, I was reading for the first time. I didn't have any other information around it. So I had to go out and search for, you know, some other things. So I'm not just basically plagiarizing an article. It was pretty interesting. I, I really enjoyed it. And I'm uh, really appreciative of Tom for giving the experience on DTNS. And although I didn't write any of those stories and uh, Owen for, you know, wanting to do this tech show with me. It, it's, it's really fun. We're not doing it live yet. Uh, we still got to, we we're kind of trying to catch our flow and, and get to uh, see how things are going. But um, yeah, if you guys want to give that a listen, uh, let me know what you think at Ethan Kane on Twitter. Uh, cruise on by there and just tell me, hey, the show is awesome. The show is shit, whatever else. Um, or tell a doctor in, in, a, in a DM and tell him how uh, how I need to be replaced on that show. Just, just as a goof, because I'm sure that'd be hilarious. He'd have something to say about me. Um, this week I am drinking uh, from the official brewery of Ritual Misery podcast, the Alaskan Cranberry Tart. And it's pretty tasty. It's, it's definitely tart. It's definitely cranberry. Um, it's pretty good. I like it. Uh, and, and when I say that they are the official brewery of the Ritual Misery podcast, that is not to assume any sort of affiliation. <laughs> You know, yet hope maybe one day they'll start su- supplying me with some free beer or something. But um, yeah, th- they're awesome, and we just we just book travel. Uh, so that's what I've been spending a lot of my week doing is booking travel. Uh, my wife and I are going to go to Juno for our anniversary, 
And while we're there, I'm going to go ahead and take a tour of the Alaska breweries. And that should be pretty awesome. Really looking forward to that. Um, the way tickets and mileage and everything else costs, we were able to afford first class tickets, mostly from miles. But it's going to be nice. Fly down there first class, fly back first class, and have a little uh, weekend getaway for our anniversary. It's going to be awesome. We usually don't do anything on our anniversaries because it only comes once every four years. So, and we've never been to Juneau. I mean, it's, it's a city you can only fly or or boat into, sail into. So that'll be that'll be interesting. And uh, it's going to be pretty awesome. I'm gonna I'm gonna like that a lot. We're doing some other travel as well. I am flying. In two weeks, two weeks, one week, two weeks. Oh, I don't remember. I think it's two weeks from now. I'm flying down to San Antonio. Um, long time listeners of the show will know that about two and a half years ago, I lost a dog. I didn't lose him. He didn't like, you know, just disappear and I couldn't find him. Um, we were getting ready to move up here to Alaska and we were getting him uh, neutered because we had decided we weren't going to try to breed him. And he was a year and a half old, so most of the benefit of of having balls was gone. And we was going to be spending a lot of of time in doggy daycare. So the decision was made to get him neutered. He didn't make it through the surgery, and it kind of crushed the whole family. And it's been about two and a half years. We've been holding out on getting a dog until I retired. We really wanted to get one of one of Sam's siblings. Sam was her dog, and um, that's not going to happen because the Sam's father has been clipped, so there's going to be no more puppies there. However, Sam was one of the first was the first litter of Apollo and Athena. The second litter from Apollo and Athena, one of those puppies just had puppies. That's weird, huh? So I'm actually going to go down to fly down to San Antonio, drive up to Abilene, pick up that puppy, one of those puppies, and then fly back here and bring that puppy home. So we will have Sam's nephew as our second family dog. And yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. The whole house is pretty excited. We just, we just made this decision last weekend. We kind of been looking forward to it. We really wanted to get one of, one of Sam's family just because they're such a great lineage. Um, awesome temperament, really smart, really trainable, um, high energy, but was but very calm about it. Like if you went out to play, Sam was all about playing. Um, but as soon as you came inside, Sam was like, okay, cool. Now it's time to sit back and watch some TV. And my, my five-year-old would, she was three at the time or whatever. She would just like use him as a futon. She would just lay on him and watch TV and he would just sit there and just let her, let her treat him like a couch. And they had the, the a really good relationship. I'm really hoping this this new puppy, uh, we can foster that same kind of relationship. I've been watching tons of videos, tons of dog training videos. Oh my gosh, I didn't realize there were so many videos out there about dog training. I mean, I know that there's a lot of videos, but just how in depth they go and how many there's about four or five different different uh, teams that are working on this particular type of video, and it's been really really interesting and really keeping my excitement of about going and getting this puppy. Um, one of the problems we are having, we don't know how big he's going to be in three weeks or two weeks when we go get him. So it's kind of hard to buy a carrier for him and we're going to be flying him back and he's going to be, it's just one of the technicalities of flying with an animal, especially when it's, it's in the middle of its rapid growing, it's going to be about eight and a half weeks old. So somewhere probably between 12 and 16 pounds, roughly. Um, but yeah, so th- this is going to be a big thing. We were kind of waiting until I retired so that I'd have more time. Instead, I'm just going to take a bunch of vacation that I would normally be taking at the end of my career. I'm going to just take that and be home for a couple, well, for a full week after we bring the puppy in. So hopefully I'll be able to build up some, some good habits and find a rhythm and be able to share that with the family to where we can keep that going so we can get the, the training, the, the basic obedience training out of the way and kind of get the house breaking out of the way as quickly as possible. And then we can go on to, uh, in, enjoying more of having a puppy while he's a puppy versus having him piddle everywhere. So, uh, and beam says there's probably a growth chart online somewhere. And there is, there are several. The problem is that a normal full grown German shepherd will weigh about 60 to 80 pounds. If they're 
of a kind of a stocky breed. Sam was 110 pounds and he was only a year and a half old. So all of them, all, all these dogs are, they're, they're, they're very large German shepherds. So if he'd normally weigh between eight and 12 pounds, I'm guessing between 12 and 16 can't be more than 20 to fly in the cabin with us. And he's not going to be big enough to put in the under, under area, the stowage, the cargo area. So really kind of just crossing our fingers on that one. Um, I have already cleared it with the airline that they've got the space. So he's already got a, got a seat, man, the camera is shaking like crazy tonight. Um, and, uh, yeah, really, that's kind of the most exciting thing that's happened all week for, for the, for, for this side of, of ritual misery. Um, I'm sure Ken will have some, some tales of the stuff that he's doing this week for him. Um, well, you see Mike Beam, I can't rent a sled and have him pull me home because we have to cross through Texas and Oklahoma, New Mexico, Colorado, all those other states that don't have any snow yet. So, and plus I'm not sure a single puppy would really uh, be able to carry my fat ass all the way up through Canada and into, uh, uh, you know, 12 hours into Alaska. Just not thinking that's, that's too feasible. Good idea though. I think that's, um... See, he's a German Shepherd, so he's not he's not necessarily a sledding dog, although I can certainly see him holding on to a rope and running with it while the kids are in the sled and him pulling the sled around, you know? That's going to be exciting. I'm really, really looking forward to having a dog again. I, I, I loved having a dog. I love, ha I love dogs. Dogs are just awesome creatures. And uh, it's going to be awesome. So... That's kind of the big news here. Um, if you'd like to, to support this podcast before I go any further into delving into whatever the hell comes into my mind, um, go cruise on over to patreon.com slash ritual misery. And if you give a fuck, give a buck and help this podcast grow and make it stronger and make it better. Every single penny that you give us through Patreon or through Twitch subscriptions or anything else goes into uh, making this show better, whether it's buying stickers or t-shirts for, for people out there that are the fellow listeners and watchers or buying plane tickets so that we can do things like South by everything goes back into the show. We're not taking anything out for ourselves. And we really appreciate everyone who wants to make this one of the best shows on the old interwebs. Um, and being asked if we picked out a name, we have a short list of names. Uh, I think the two favorites right now are Bruce and Kai. Um, I'm partial to Kai myself, K-A-I, uh, it's kind of a Hawaiian thing, although nothing's been decided and it took us almost a month to name Sam. Like we went through a lot of different iterations before, before we finally s settled on Sam. So I'm sure that's going to be a long, um, long process again, but we're not going to, we're not going to definitely name, uh, the puppy until we get it home and kind of see what it's, what his attitude is and how his demeanor is because that that, that that affects how you name a pet. Uh, how about as Raphael? No, as as Raphael? No, 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 no. That's that's too complicated, and I want a single syllable name. Whatever it is, it's got to be single syllables. It's just easier that way. All right, um, I'm going to go ahead and remind you that the Skype line is open if you'd like to call in. <laughs> Beam says just name him Dog. Yeah, that's that's legit. No, that's. Like I, I have a couple friends that had dogs, like full grown dogs who were named Puppy because that's what they called them. And they just kept calling them Puppy and just never bothered to come up with a name. So um, the Skype lines are open. Ritual.misery. I'll leave them open for a few minutes. See if anybody wants to call in and, and give us a chat. Uh, meanwhile, uh, what have you. So one of the things I love watching YouTube. I absolutely love watching YouTube. I hate the ads. I'm not going to pay for a YouTube red because it's too easy to skip the ads on my phone. I hate the ads. Once in a while you get caught in one and it actually pulls your attention. in. So I want to know what ads have you seen on YouTube that really made you think about the ad and maybe even watch the whole thing. Cause I've, I've seen some that are like five seconds. Those are easy. You just let, let them play. Cause you can't skip them anyway. And then there are some really, really poor ones that are like three minutes long and they're absolute crap the entire time. And I saw a couple of those today because I, was, I basically had the, my iPad playing YouTube on the side while I was working. So I was listening to it. Um, and uh, yeah, there's, there's a couple today that I couldn't skip past that are, that, that I didn't, you know, 
fast forward past before they started. And, oh man, I hate YouTube ads. This should be a science on how to best grab your attention in the first five seconds and make you want to watch an ad. And there are a couple out there. Some of them have been pretty funny, like the the Doritos one. The first time I saw that was on uh, was on YouTube. Um, the Doritos one with uh, Peter Dinklage and um, uh, Morgan Freeman. I thought that was hilarious. That was great. And, uh, and there's been a few. But what is your what is your favorite ad story? What, what's the favorite thing that you found about ads? Whether it's a really bad one, a really good one, or maybe even a video that you thought was an ad turned out to be an actual video or vice versa. Like, cause that's, that happens sometimes too. That might be the best, the best effective method is that your ad simply melds in and actually looks like another YouTube video. Cause if you're not really paying attention, then it still plays and at least you get it out there. And by the time you realize it's an ad, um, by the time the, the watcher realizes it, it realizes it's an ad, they're already like invested. Like there's already a story built up, you know, I bet, I bet that would be, probably be the most effective, at least for me, because when it's auto playing, sometimes I don't realize when one thing ends and another one begins. Um, so if you can get it to begin as a normal YouTube video, my brain might just let it bypass for a little bit. And then by the time I realize it's an advertisement for something, I'm already like invested. Like I've already spent two minutes watching this stupid crap. Like I'm going to see how it ends and then have it like be a multi-parter to where there's multiple you know, then it stops on like a cliffhanger, a commercial cliffhanger, and then comes in later and resumes, like has like a little brief little, little interlude. Now you're getting two ads out of me. You're you're serializing your ads. Like, why are people not doing this? Make the advertisements more entertaining. Get some real directors in there to make these advertisements. It's on YouTube. You're competing with amateurs. Do something nice and professional that'll get your attention. Oh, I hate YouTube ads. Come on. We can do better than this. We, we, we live in a world where we can check out the postage on an envelope in the middle of a cornfield from freaking space. We can't figure out how to make a YouTube ad worth a crap. Come on. Oh, irritating. <sighs> so that's my rant for the day because that's pretty much all the energy I have as far as ranting goes. Um, this beer's pretty good, though. Have you ever tried to find something and ended up doing a lot more than you should have done in order to find it? Let me give you an example because I'm not wording it very well. I needed to measure the area underneath the porch in the backyard. So it's, it's, it's a walkout basement. And then on the second floor from the back, the first floor from the front is the dining room. And that's where the porch is or the patio, whatever. There's an area underneath that that's rather large. And I wanted to measure it to see, because if I want to fence that part in so that the dog has an area to go potty in the wintertime where it's, there's less, less likely to be snow on the ground because of the, the porch or the patio, whichever it is. Is there a difference between porch and patio? Like, is, is there really, I don't know. I wanted to measure that area. Couldn't find my tape measure. I ended up cleaning up about two thirds of the crap in the garage that had just been used and put back, you know, and, and not put back right. Or like somewhere along the lines, one of the toolboxes had just spilt and just spilled everything everywhere. I ended up cleaning up about two thirds of the garage, trying to find the tape measure only to figure, find out that the tape measure was on the banister right next to the door on the stairs that lead down into the garage. So I spent about an hour and a half cleaning up a mess trying to find an item that was readily available if I had just known where to look for it. Does that make me a bad person because I didn't just look there where I had clearly put it a few days prior? Maybe. Maybe. That could be. Does it make me a bad person because I didn't want to clean out my own damn garage? Like, isn't that the American male thing to do to have a nice clean garage? Yeah, I don't care. It's just a storage room, really. But I will say that now that the garage has been cleaned, it looks nice. Like it's, it's kosher. It's good. Um, and I measure the area. It's pretty big. It's like a 11 and a half by 12 by 11 feet tall. So 11 and a half feet away from the house, 12 feet wide. And then from the ground to the bottom side of the patio 
is 12 feet, I think. They had it written down somewhere. It's a pretty big area. That'll be the, the pooping area for the, for the puppy, for the puppy poops. <sighs> I'm getting a dog. That's kind of exciting. That, that, like, it's been a couple of years, and I don't know. Like, I'm kind of worried about how I'm going to feel when the dog actually comes comes to the house and how it's going to be different because I've only had one pet one real pet in my adult life because, um, I mean, my ex-wife and I had a cat. Well, we had a dog and a cat and then we, the dog wasn't good around babies and we were, my wife, my ex-wife was pregnant. So we, um, the, so cinnamon stayed with, uh, kind of a family friend and lived out the rest of her days on a huge farm in, in Indiana. I assume she's dead. She says, shit, it's been, it's been 20 years. <laughs> so, um, and also we had chaos and coffee. They were, a uh, uh, litter mate kittens and had them for several years. But my wife, my ex-wife and I divorced back in like Oh seven, Oh eight. So it's been 10 years since I've had a pet in the house at all, really. And, uh, then we had Sam and he was amazing. So this would be basically my second dog in what really amounts to my adult life. And I'm nervous, not for the biting and the chewing shit up and all that kind of stuff. Just, I, I don't know. Like I wanted the dog to be as close to Sam as possible because he's such an amazing dog, but I'm afraid of a dog being too close to Sam because he's a different color at least. Um, Yeah. It's, it's interesting to go through and like when you don't have a pet, you look at people that have pets like, oh my gosh, they're catering so much to their, to their cat or their turtle or their, their sloth or whatever. Um, but then to look forward, I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting this puppy. It's pretty amazing. And it's going to be a lot of busy work. But, ah. Uh, Anyway, I want to know what you guys think. What is your what is your favorite pet story? Like, uh, if you could summarize your, your life with pets in one anecdote or one uh, one phrase, what would it be? Would it be uh, 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 "Thank goodness I'm not lonely anymore"? Or would it be uh, 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 "Another shoe hits the shit"? Like, wh- what what would what would it be? What what phrase would summarize your life with pets or lack thereof? Uh, for any of these ideas that I've been talking about tonight, you can either tell us at Ritual Misery on Twitter or email us podcast at ritualmisery.com. Uh, NBeam says pets are too much of a hassle, at least in this phase of my life. And that's, that, that is very interesting. That's very true. Depending on where you are in life. Like when we got Sam, Autumn was not even two years old yet. Um, and then we had a puppy and it was great. And then we, then Evelyn came along, my, my niece, was born and she lived with us and then Sam went away. Um, and now we're going to get a new puppy and, and Evelyn is three. Autumn is five about to turn six. Like it's the family. Our family has grown because now we have Amber living with us as well as Maisie. It's going to be interesting. Uh, it's, it's already a busy house and now we're getting ready to go into wintertime. So, socialization might be a little bit of an issue. Um, <laughs> and Beam says, uh, I've had dogs, cats, guinea pigs, and rabbits, and now I have a girlfriend of five years. She's my pet. Well, I mean, as long as you don't put her on eBay uh, trying to sell a used girlfriend, I guess you're probably good to go, even though that did turn out pretty well for that guy. If you haven't seen that story, you should go check that out. Just eBay, uh, a, a, a search in your, your, your search engine of choice. Uh, eBay used girlfriend and they should pop up. It's pretty good. Don't do it around your spouse though. Cause that might be an issue. It might, might cause some issues for you. Uh, but that's, that's, that's up to you. You do you. <sighs> well, I'm going to go do me. Uh, I am on the, the Twitter. <laughs> he says at least I don't have to clean up her poop yet. No, but it's coming. Uh, you, you will have to eventually. You can find me on Twitter at Ethan Kane. If you want to reach out to Kent and tell him what a what a jerk he is for being on vacation this week and actually enjoying himself, uh, hit him up at RM underscore Del Noche. And you can find the show at Ritual Misery. Those are all on Twitter. 
we 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 have a Facebook page. You could always go like that. It's got some likes on it. it. We don't really use it, but I mean, if you if you if enough people like it, we might go there and start posting some stuff. We might it might be a thing. <sighs> Meanwhile, um, you can. Uh, I didn't really link to anything tonight, but if if I find something, uh, I'll I'll link to it and uh, put that in the old. <laughs> in the old show notes I'm clipping and I don't know why anyway um, we are live every Thursday well pretty much every Thursday on twitch.tv slash ritual misery um, we pop on about 7pm uh, pacific time most Thursdays uh, I want to give a big shout out to Squid aka Sean McDowell for last week for filling in for me and Kent as we both got hit with last minute holy crap we're not going to be able to do the show events and uh, yeah he did awesome I, I still need to get the audio from him and push that out but uh, what I saw before I had to go he was nailing it. Probably did better on that show than I am on this show, I'll be honest with you, because I'm used to having a co-host, and he's used to being on radio where he doesn't have anybody talking back to him. Um, anyway, we would like to thank Kevin McLeod for his music, and I'm going to go ahead and push that right now. Boom. Um, make sure it's actually going to play. There we go. And, of course, thank you for listening, for Kent, for me, for all of you, and for those of you in chat. This has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. Uh, see you! Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y Boom goes the dynamite.